Rogue Iron Game is brought to you by Go Ruck. Founded by a Green Beret, Go Ruck is an American brand with Special Forces roots. One event remains here in Santa Monica and the Arnold Strongman USA and plenty still to be decided. We appreciate you being here with us throughout the day, everybody in Santa Monica, California on the Rogue Iron Game. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Dr. Bill Crawford and Margo Alvarez will be along here in a little bit as well, helping us cover this, what has been a fantastic event so far, a day pretty much full of surprises. It really has been, and it's come down to the last event. And does Brian have the ability to strike from here? <laughs> like you said earlier, everything is going according to a plan, except for Maxime Boudreau, who has now become uh, the human monkey wrench in this entire competition. Here are the overall standings heading into the final event, as just four and a half points separate first place Maxime Boudreau from third place Martins Lisi's. Shaw and Lisi's and Boudreau all need to win to get to the Arnold Strongman Classic. Ron Heinla needs to finish in the top three in order to get himself a spot to the Arnold Strongman Classic. But let's talk Brian Shaw, who in that last event was lined up next to Maxime Boudreau and blew him out of the water, shrunk the gap, and Brian Shaw needs to have a huge performance now in this final event. Does he have enough? I believe he does. He's got this big body, he's got huge strides, a ton of experience, and the key is going to be getting that 400-pound bag off the floor, 30 feet, and over the bar. It's going to be an unbelievable feat to do it, but if anybody can do it, it's going to be Brian. Here's what the athletes are facing in the fifth and final event here of the Arnold Strongman USA. You heard Bill mention that 400-pound bag. Three bags that they have to carry, 30 feet, and then put them over a bar. Athletes compete head to head, but the best time is going to win. They start at 300 pounds, then 350 pounds, and then finally, as you mentioned, Bill, uh, the 400 pound bag. What is it going to take to be successful in this event? Well, with any carrying event, it's gonna be, you know, absolutely able to get this efficiently up to your chest, moving your feet quickly. That's gonna be the, the key. I think some athletes will not get that 400-pound 400 400 pound bag up off the floor, and if they do, they're going to really, really struggle with it and kill time in their grip. Let's expand on Brian Shaw here a little bit. I know you think this uh, event suits him well, but why is that? His height. Mm -hmm. He's a really tall athlete. He's got those big, massive, long arms and these big, long strides. Uh, this is exactly the type of event that he's made his career on. Brian Shaw has the physical tools here. I know Martins Leitzitz, you talked a lot about him uh, when it comes to this event. But why do you like him here in Event 5? He's got a great motor. Mm -hmm. He's got great grip strength. You saw those massive hands. He's got, super, he's got the super ability to rise to the occasion. So I think he's right in there as well. Boudreaux shocked us all day, but these two guys, this is the event that's really going to come down to right where Martins and Brian live. Brian Shaw getting ready here to take on event number five. Again, the athletes will be going head to head. They are paired, but it is the top time out of everybody that will win this event. So Brian Shaw comes in trailing Maxime Boudreau by three and a half points. He's going to have to beat him, Boudreau that is, by four spots in this event in order to leapfrog him and take the top spot in the overall standings for this event. So Brian Shaw and Maxime Boudreau will be the final pairing to go. Ronald Heinle and Martins Lisi's will be going head to head. Now Heinle needs to leapfrog Lisi's to get into the top three. Eddie Williams will be the only man who will be going by himself as he will be the first man out on the floor. But those final two matchups, I mean, you couldn't have picked it better. No, you couldn't have. Maxime's great, as you saw in the farmer's carry. Great grip, the ability to move his feet really quickly. But this is a little bit different because that 400 pound bag is going to represent a significant challenge and a lot of that's going to be back strength and he didn't do that great in the deadlift so I have to question that a little bit. Now you've done a, a lot of you know stone carries and work with stones and how does stone carrying differ from a sandbag? I mean they're both obviously extremely heavy. That's a great point Sean. The, the stones you can press your fingers into it, you can pull it back into yourself and you can fix and have a silent upper body. The problem with the sandbag, if you pull it in, 
it can actually start to slide down, even if it's a pretty tight sandbag like this. If you pull too high, it'll, it'll fold over. This thing moves. It actually fights you more than even a stone. Good stone carriers usually will train with sandbags also. 300, 350, and 400 pounds. And they have to carry them down the floor, put it over a bar, go back, retrieve the next bag, and then they have a 60-second time cap. And again, this final event is going to decide who heads to Columbus, Ohio in March for the Arnold Strongman Classic. And it's incredible when you watch these athletes carry these things because it's hard to understand how strong they are. When they move these bags out, it takes a team of people to do it. Well, you know, uh, uh, you know, and this isn't disparaging. Um, these athletes are like farm animals. These guys are <laughs> strong beyond human, uh, or past human capability. So it doesn't surprise me it takes a team of – and look at these guys doing this. These are really big, strong men, and they're struggling to get these implements in place, and these guys are going to throw these bags up in their chest and, and, and move their feet super quick and, and complete a course. There's a reason why uh, Eddie Williams is going to be paired by himself, and that's because Alexei Novikov has withdrawn uh, from the competition because of a back injury. Uh, he is safe, though. Novikov has already qualified uh, for the Arnold Strongman Classic, so he has backed out of the competition. But he was a guy that I was really looking forward to taking on this event because what he did you know, at the Arnold Strongman Classic last year in that Husafel Stone carry. Yes, he did a great job with that. I was really looking forward to seeing him carry the bags because I, th I think this is something that he really showed that he's got a propensity for. I have to say, though, that, that we did not, I'll have to keep going back to it, you know, expected, unexpected results. Dark horse for me was Jerry. Uh, Jerry's done fantastic today, but Boudreaux just came out of nowhere. Yeah, Maxime Boudreaux, when we started the day, was basically a name on the list. He was a guy who was just filling out the field here. Let's go back through his day so far. Incredible performance in event number one. And then that was the momentum he needed to carry himself through the rest of the day. Shocking performance on the press. I didn't know that. I did know he was a good carrier with, with a great grip, and he proved himself on that one. And then you go to the bag over the bar, and he was the last man out which gave him the advantage. He knew how fast he had to get to that final bag. And you just look at the pace that he, he started with here. Wins the first three events for a perfect 39 out of a possible 39 points in the competition after three. Well, at that point, after he won the first three events, it was sort of, you know, the guys were afraid, very afraid. And then the deadlift came. And the deadlift is the reason why we are in the position we are in heading into this final event as Maxime Boudreaux was only able to get two repetitions, put him down towards the bottom uh, in that event. The Rogue Strongman Sandbag Load. They got to take it over a 52-inch bar. 300, then 350, then 400 pounds, and they are uh, paired together here. Beautiful implements. I just love looking at these bags and the fact that they're clearly marked as well. But again, sand moves a bit, and it's just a much different implement than even a stone. Brian Shaw did not have the start, obviously, that Maxime Boudreaux had. But Shaw has come on late here, and he has stayed consistent throughout this competition. What's impressed you about the way he's performed today? Well, when it comes down to it, he's put in enough to actually get it. He came on in the, in the bag uh, over bar and uh, had a solid second-place finish, and then had a great event with the deadlift and really showed that, you know, he's got the experience. Now we're down to an event that kind of suits him a little better than even the other events. We kicked things off earlier today, and we spent some time talking about Brian Shaw's career. And for those people who you may not have seen that, you spent a ton of time around this guy. Uh, you, you're friends with him. You talk to him a lot. What makes him one of the best, if not the best, American strongman? Well, one, he's, he's decorated. He's got the pelts on the wall. Four-time World's Strongest Man, three-time Arnold Champion, podium finisher multiple times in each one of those. He's had a stranglehold on Strongman for a number of years. But I think the thing that, always, that I always love about Brian, he's got great physical gifts, and he, but he just prepares. He gets ready. There's no stone left unturned. And the other thing about Brian is he makes it look easy. He shows up, and he's just efficient. It's, it's actually so frustrating for these guys to have to compete against that time 
after time after time. It's like, okay, we get it. You're the best. <laughs> Leave us alone for a while. Give somebody else some candy. And here he is, at this point in his career, still performing at this level. It's astonishing. And he's been really busy. He's been on the the History Channel show that he's been doing. That's a lot of fun to watch. You guys have seen that. But, you know, it's hard to maintain that schedule and train at such a high level. But like you mentioned, here he is and in position to earn another trip to the Arnold Strongman Classic. He said mentally he's in a great place because he's had the last couple of months, or actually six weeks, to just focus on himself and his training and, and really just spend time in the gym and get prepared for this competition. I think that's exactly what we're seeing today. Uh, those rogue yokes on the floor will serve as the bar over which the athletes need to put that bag. So that's why they, they are out on the floor right now. And then the sandbags are, are lined up as well. Fifth and final event. And when we started the day, you know, we expected a great battle between Leeds and Shaw. Certainly did not expect what Maxime Boudreaux has had. But I think we did expect that things would come down probably to the final event, and that's exactly what has happened. Well, for a strongman fan, which honestly that's what I am first and <laughs> foremost, I have to say this is perfect. Mm -hmm. This has gone too fast for me. I, you know, the sun's going down a little bit here, and the athletes are winding this down. But this has been exactly what we were looking for, and it's coming down to really the, la the two people we were, we've been talking about, Martins and Brian. But I'm really glad that Maxime has actually done this because it's going to really push them to perform even better. Still getting set here for the start of the fifth and final event. Arnold Strongman USA, Arnold Schwarzenegger on hand, as he was last year. Arnold brings the star power year after year. There's a maintenance issue with the floor. One of the corners has just has popped up. They're just making sure that that's flush with the rest of the floor. It's for safety purposes. And once they get that finished, then we will be set to start uh, event number five. It's a little bit cool out here, so I have to say that uh, the guys are... You know, uh, they're, they're large men, uh, and it's going to be, it's going to help them a little bit not to be overly heated, but also you want to make sure that you're not going to pull something or that's going to hamper your, your event tonight or this after this evening. So as you can see, the sun's really going down. It's getting dark here, but these guys are going to put on a show, and it will not dampen the excitement anyway in any way, I'm sure. So it looks like that maintenance issue may have just been taken care of as Brian Shaw is out there inspecting the floor with just about everybody else that's involved in this thing. And Shaw will be in the final pairing with Maxime Boudreau. And one more look at the order of the competitors as we go from the bottom of the standings to the top, and that's why Brian Shaw and Maxime Boudreau will be paired together. Rano Heinla and Martins Litsis will be paired together as well as Eddie Williams has taken the floor, and he will be the only athlete going by himself. He must feel a little bit like the canary in the coal mine here. First guy out and by himself. 60 seconds to move those three bags across the floor and over the bar. Top time wins. And Eddie Williams will be up first. The Williams is underway and having little trouble with the 300 pound bag and now he will retreat and hoist up that 350 pound bag. He's decided to take it from side to side. I actually agree with this in some ways because then you can hold it a little bit more toward the solar plexus and have a little more space to grab it. Some of the guys I'm sure are just gonna take it straight up. He's moving his feet well. He's a tall man so that's good for him on this event. The second bag is over for Eddie Williams who He's like, whoa, this 400-pound bag is going to be terrible. I know he's not having the competition that he wanted, but he has competed the entire day with a smile on his face. He even sang a song for the crowd earlier today. So 10 seconds to go for Williams as he's working on the 400-pound bag. Who thought of this? <laughs> and that is not going to happen uh, for Eddie Williams. Great competition today. <laughs> So you can sing, he can dance, he can lift heavy stuff. Eddie Williams is a multi-talented individual and a guy who does a lot of good in his community as well. Uh, 
he is a youth support worker for children with autism uh, in his hometown of Sydney, Australia. Again, we like to hear that of our strong man. He's a renaissance man for sure. To achieve this level as an athlete and, the, and to do all the things that he does outside of that. Casey Garrison and Wesley Claiborne are the next two out. We talked about uh, Wesley Claiborne as one of America's underrated strongmen. Certainly has some great credentials. And then uh, Casey Garrison, the former, former minor league baseball player who was sixth overall at the 2014 Arnold Strongman Amateur Competition. Well, I believe uh, I believe that he's uh, going to actually he's actually going to uh, Claiborne's going to give some space for the other athletes because he's the keg over bar world record holder. So this event probably plays to him. So if anybody's going to put some distance between some leaders, this could be the athlete that would do that. Brian Sean Martins Leetsies would <laughs> love to see other people. Get in between themselves and Maxine Boudreau. Garrison is ready. Claiborne is ready. And the clock has started. 300 bag in a hurry for Wesley Claiborne. Garrison right behind him. Now Garrison runs into some problems getting that bag over the bar. And he is well behind Claiborne who is almost to the end with the 350-pound bag, and that is over. So he's going to scoop up this 400-pound bag and take off with it. Claiborne at 350. Pardon me, Garrison at 350 as Claiborne works on the 400-pound bag. Wow, We're a little past surprising. the 30-second mark. A little surprising. I thought he was just going to snatch that bag up and take off. 20 seconds to go as Garrison has now caught Claiborne. And Claiborne looks like he's going to be done. Garrison continues to just try and get some kind of handhold on that bag, and he's not going to be able to budge it, and that's going to do it. So, so far, every athlete we've seen has gotten stopped cold on that 400-pound bag. Well, that's what we talked about before we started this event, that that 400-pound bag was probably going to stop a lot of these athletes from even lifting it. 3 athletes down 8 remain as two men have withdrawn from the competition so far Matyaj Belshak and Alexei Novikov who withdrew after the last event because of a back issue so height has a little bit to do with this as well I mean, not just your stride length but also the ability to just get that bag up and over that bar it's 52 inches it's a little over four feet, the, and the 52 inches sounds a little arbitrary, but it's actually the height of the, of the average whiskey barrel. Interesting. Yes, so that's kind of where we come up with that 52 inches. <laughs> I guess if you don't have a rogue yoke, just go grab a whiskey barrel. Just use that. Whiskey barrels are awesome. <laughs> they're great implements to have at your, at your disposal for training, and also they're great to look at when, when we have these events. The bags are getting put back, back in place as Rob Kearney and Yitz Kramer will be the next two up. And you saw Rob Kearney is the 2019 Arnold Sports Festival Australia champion. That has allowed him to qualify for the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic. Yitz Kramer. Yitz is as tall, he's got a good deadlift. He should do pretty decently at this event. Kramer and Kearney are underway. Now Kearney putting that thing on his shoulder, and he's going to heave it right over the bar, jogging back for the 350-pound bag. Kramer right behind him. Well, as a shorter athlete, I think that's his, that was what he was looking to do. Plus, he can save his grip. He's going to do it like everybody else is on this one. And now the 350 bag is over for Kramer and Kearney. And each man will address the 400-pound bag. We've seen three athletes take on this event so far, and no one has been able to even lift this thing yet. There it is. It's up. Kramer has it lapped. And Kramer working his way down the floor, but his grip seems to be slipping a little bit. Oh, now he's got to pick it back up. 
A Kearney has it aloft. A Kearney methodically working his way towards the bar. It doesn't look like he's going to get there inside the one minute, but Rob Kearney with a late charge is now your leader. Yes. Great effort. Great effort. The first two men we have seen to lift the 400-pound bag. Rob Kearney got the closest to getting it over that bar. He had maybe five, six more seconds. He may have been able to complete this event. Possibly so. But again, that height would be a lot to overcome. And now we start to get down to the matchups that are really going to have a bearing on who's going to wind up in Columbus, Ohio. So one more look at Rob Kearney at 400 pounds. Struggling for every inch, but he passes where Kramer is and claims that victory. So Kramer got to work a little more quickly on the 400 pound bag, but it was Rob Kearney who took some extra time to get that thing lapped. And then unlike Kramer, didn't drop it until time had been called. These are two great athletes that are going to go head to head with each other. JF Carone out of Canada. Lots of back strength, super grip strength. Seven time Canada's strongest man. He'll be making his third appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Jerry Pritchett, speaking of back strength. We'll be going head to head with him. So, so far, no one has finished inside the one minute time cap. But Rob Kearney came the closest. Yes, he did. I will say, I was not surprised that some of the athletes could not get the 400 pound bag up. But I think from here on, we're going to see the 400 pound bag go up. And now we're going to see some real fast times. Yeah, Perone in the farmer's walk, farmer's carry had a Fantastic time. Hoping to duplicate that performance in, in this fifth and final event. And Jerry Pritchett now just needs to just finish towards the middle here in this event. And it's looking like he'll be returning to Columbus, Ohio for the Arnold Strongman Classic. And we are underway in this heat. Corona on the left, Pritchett on the right. And no problem with the 300 pound bag. No. Tons of experience, tons of back strength and grip strength from both these athletes. Pritchett at 350, Carone right behind him, and now both will go back to the 400-pound bag, the final bag here. I expect both of them to be able to lift it and get it over that bar. Who can Pritchett do it first? Has it lapped, and he's slowly working his way towards the bar. Carone has it lapped, oh. and here comes J.F. Carone. Pritchett just trying to hang on. Carone's grip starting to slip, so both men struggling here. Going to regrip and try to get it over that bar. Can he do it? Carone has it, and oh. it is over the bar. And JF Carone, the first man to finish, will have to wait for his official time. But he is now the leader in this event. The so JF Carone. Had a good fight with that 400 pound bag, and he is now your event leader. Again, we are waiting on his official time. This is when you reach down into the heart of darkness and pull something out that you didn't expect. You've got to struggle for every inch. The bag is fighting you. It's heavy, it's at the end of a long day of competition, and your pride makes, the bar, makes it go over the bar. Great effort. Not sure about Caron's official time as Rano Heinla gets set to take the floor, and he'll be going head to head with Martins Lisi's. Now, Heinla has got to beat Lisi's in this event if he wants a chance of moving into the top three in the overall standings. That is true, and, and uh, he, he really needs to complete the course because JF completed the course. He had kind of a disastrous farmer's walk. So we'll see how he does in this for our distance events. He showed, his, he showed himself, though, in strength endurance by winning the deadlift. 
from Martin Lietzis, third place overall, 39 points. He is four and a half back of Maxime Boudreau. And the defending champion of this event. JF Caron's time, 52.44 seconds. The only man to finish inside the 60 second time cap. Heinla and Lietzis are ready. Clock has started. But Lietzis in a hurry with 300 pounds. He'll be first to the bar. Heinla about a second behind him. Lietzis back to 350. These guys act like they want to qualify. Here comes Martins Lietzis with 350, and he'll get that over the bar, no problem. And he's putting some distance between himself and Heinla. Lietzis for 400. Has it in his lap. Martins Lietzis making his way towards the bar. Here he comes. And the Dragon breathing fire in event five. 32 seconds unofficially for Martins Lietzis. Unbelievable effort. Rano Heinla finishing as well. So Heinla is going to be in second place in this event right now. But Rano Heinla really had to beat Lietzis in this event to have a solid chance of getting into the top three. But man, Martins Lietzis showing off that engine here. and setting the new time to beat. Around 32 seconds unofficially. We'll wait for his official time, but he is your new event leader. Final pairing, Maxime Boudreau and Brian Shaw. Boudreau has his fate in his hands. You want to be in control in this situation, and he definitely does. He just needs to perform. This is for all the marbles. This is it. This is what we were waiting for. So Brian Shaw, second place overall, three and a half points back of the man he is paired with in this heat. Everybody is on their feet. So 32.84 seconds is the top time. Now, Ronald Heinle was right behind Martins Lietzis' time of 32.84, so he could factor in here as well. But Brian Shaw needs to beat Maxime Boudreau by four spots in this event in order to pass him on the leaderboard here. That's a tall order. Brian would have to win and win convincingly. But also, too, it's just, you know, where does, where does Boudreaux place? But those last two men actually had great times, a little over 30 seconds. So if he doesn't beat those two guys, half point for Brian. But Brian's got to win. Maxime Boudreaux getting ready here. Great sportsmanship. Guys wishing each other luck. Maxime's got to feel great. Look at him. He's at the last event at the Arnold, head to head with Shaw, trying to get a place in the high altar of strength, which is the Arnold Strongman Classic. He's got to feel great about today no matter what. But he wants to win. Both of these men have to win this competition to get to Columbus, Ohio. Final heat of the final event here at the Arnold Strongman USA in Santa Monica. As Maxime Boudreaux can make his first ever appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic if he can win this event. Boudreaux did really great with the farmer's walk. But this is different. This is up on your chest. Back strength does play, a, does play in this event. Who's going to Ohio? Final heat of the final event. And both Shaw and Boudreaux off to a quick start. Boudreaux back to the 350-pound bag first. Shaw right there with him, right there with him. But Boudreaux has the lead. It's and close. Shaw this has is it. closed the gap. 400 pounds, 32.84 seconds. That's the time to beat. Shaw has the bag picked up. Boudreaux struggling. Shaw now has the lead. So Brian Shaw not going to win the event, but now let's see what Boudreaux does. So Brian Shaw trying to get that bag over the bar. Once he does, the time will stop. So Brian Shaw looking like he's going to finish in the top three here. Maxime Boudreaux is now struggling. So Boudreaux 
can't get the bag over the bar. So what we're going to have finish? to see how this shakes out. Where is this? So Brian is three points ahead, is, uh, is just one point ahead of Martins. Brian Shaw needed to beat Maxime Boudreaux by four spots in this event to close the gap. The fact that, that Boudreaux did not get that bag over the bar means that everybody who did, including, including Caron, Heinle, and Lisi's, that's four points. But... So one more, let's, one more look at how just close this was. Brian Shaw was trailing until the final bag and then was able to get to the bar. The clock that we had on the screen, that was unofficial, so keep that in mind too. So a lot needs to be sorted out here. But we do know that Brian Shaw gets that bag over the bar ahead of Maxime Boudreau. Remember the times of Martins Lietzis and Ronald Heinle. Those could come into play here. So Martins, we do know this, won the event. He won the event and he had Heinle just behind him. Two points. This is going to be extremely close when we see the final standings. But Martins Lietzis, you had him circled for this event, and he certainly did not disappoint. Correct. He won this event, and I knew this would be in his wheelhouse because he's got that big motor. So look at Martins Leetes going up against Ronald Heinle. He sprinted through this event. Just quickly getting those bags up to his chest, moving his feet, moving his feet, rhythmically breathing. And enough steam to get it over that bar. He ripped that 400 pound bag off the ground, got it over the bar in 32.84 seconds. He wins the final event. And the Dragon is standing by with Margot Alvarez. I'm here with Martins, event winner for event five. How do you feel? I feel good, but we'll find out if I feel good enough. That was a hell of an effort to end it. I hope it was enough. Goodness, I, I'm on, I, you know, I can hardly contain myself waiting. All the energy. You finished with 32.84 seconds. What was your strategy going into that? To win it, I ultimately I trained this event more than any because the finishing event is the most important event to be a proficient at no matter how tired you are. So I trained the hell out of this one. It worked out, I won this event. Now I'm crossing my fingers, that was enough to seal the deal, but it was so, it's so close right now. It's impossible to tell. It is, we're on a very close tie. You did amazing, let's stay tuned to see who's gonna finish at the top. Thank you so much. Thank you, back to you guys. Thank you, Margo, and congratulations to Martins Lietzis for winning that event. We're trying to figure all this stuff out as the official scorers are figuring this thing out. So Martin Lietzis, we know this, wins the event. Unofficially, this is from what we saw, it looks like Ronald Heinle is going to finish second because he was right behind Lietzis. Yes, in this event. Then Brian Shaw looks like he's third in this event. Now the question is, did anybody get in between Shaw and Maxime Boudreaux? Because if that happens, Lietzis has a shot here. If it doesn't, Lietzis won't be able to make up enough because he came into this event, Leetis did with 39 points, Boudreaux had 43 and a half. It's a four and a half point difference. So Leetis would have had to have beaten Maxime Boudreaux by five spots to make up those points. Well, by, you know, what we're looking at, at least from, you know, what what we have. So uh, J.F. Caron actually finished. Mm -hmm. Boudreaux did not finish. Right. So there, there could be enough. And then, you know, Rob Kearney, remember how close he got. Yes. That might factor in as well. But for distance, Kearney wasn't as close as Boudreaux. Right. Boudreaux had it right at the base of the, of the, of the stand and did not get it over. So, so it looks like we just need to tabulate this and see what happened. So I've just been told now, Leetzies finishes first in that event. Shaw takes second. 
and it's Boudreaux who finishes third overall in the competition. So it looks like Leeds is the man who's going, but that's unofficial. That's unofficial right now. So just want to make that clear. That's what it looked like to me because of. All right, let's go down to the floor for the official announcement. fight and Max I've never never thought he would be such a beast wow great competition thank you so much I just want to ask you a question which of the lifts were you the most disappointed about that you did today the uh, I worked the throwing like crazy I wanted it to get it to be one of my best events it's still one of my worst events but it's still getting better. And which, which one was your favorite where you said, I actually surprised myself? Well, going into this medley, when I was practicing the bags uh, in the back, I could hardly pick the 350 because uh, everything was hurting so much and I was so tired. So the adrenaline turned on and I got it. I got it done. Well, last year, Last year said, I'll be back. What do you say this year? I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Give it up for your champion, Martins Lises. And one more time for all the competitors you saw today. Blood, sweat, and tears in this competition. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the Arnold Strongman US. For John Anderson and Derek Carver, I'm Matt Eisman. Thank you, guys. We will see you back here next year. In the meantime, we will see you in Columbus. For the second straight year, Martin Lietzis wins the Arnold Strongman USA. He does it in dramatic fashion here, coming down to the final event, the event that you had circled as the one that he was going to knock out of the park. He does that, and he finishes first ahead of Shaw and Boudreau in the overall standings. Boudreau put a wrench in everything today, but it actually played out kind of like we thought it would with one, two, with Leachis and Shaw. But this last event was just his event, and that's the, the kind of thing that he would do. But he kept coming on and kept coming on, and he didn't waver. It takes that consistency and that fight He's known as the Dragon, and I've said he's a wild and unstoppable force. That's the key to his victories. And this was the key to the victory right here on the 400-pound bag, the effort that allows him to win that final event and got just enough help to leapfrog Maxime Boudreau on the overall leaderboard here, and Martins Lietzis is going back to Columbus, Ohio, and he is with Margot Alvarez. Congratulations, Martins. You did what you needed to do to finish on top. How do you feel? This one's really unreal, because that was uh, by millimeter, I mean, like, seconds. It was a very tight close. You did what you needed to do in that final event. You had an amazing performance on that fifth event. What are you going to do going into training leading up to the Arnold in Columbus? Sleep, eat, and then, of course, back to training. I have some deficiencies to clear up, like a throwing. Goodness, I need to get better at that immediately. Well, you did amazing. Congratulations again. We're all super proud of you. We look forward to seeing you in Columbus. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, I can't wait. What a show. Thank you. You're I'm, welcome. I can't wait to have some of your wine. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. She, she sent me some. She, she has 
great wine. Thank you, Martins. It's been an amazing year at the pier at Santa Monica. Crowd was amazing, electric. I hope you guys enjoyed. Looking forward to seeing you later. Take care. Back to you guys. Thank you, Margo, and thank you, Martins Lisi's, and congratulations to Martins Lisi's. His streak now is getting going at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Unfortunately, the streak for Brian Shaw uh, has ended. It is just not going to seem like the Arnold Strongman Classic without Brian Shaw there. We're going to have some fantastic athletes, but you've watched him compete for quite a while now. What do you think is going through his head right now? Well, I don't think he's ready to let go of this. His ride's not over, so he's going to go back. He's had a very busy year with a lot of extraneous things. He's going to focus on his training. He's going to go back to the basics and reinvent himself, somewhat like Sadruna Saviscus had done, and come back and be better. It wouldn't surprise me if he stacks up some more World Strongest Men and, and Arnold Strongman Classic wins. But this year it's over. The ride's over for him this year, at least as far as the Arnold. Yeah, Brian Shaw was close today. I had some really great performances in these events but at the end it, you know it wasn't enough maxime boudreau just had too many event wins and just not enough points on the board at the end for brian shaw to get himself back to columbus ohio as he takes second place here at the arnold strongman at usa now brian shaw had some great battles with half thor bjornsson at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Martins Leitzis is now the man who's going to have to pick up that mantle and try to dethrone uh, the mountain. Leitzis finished second last year. He was really good in that competition, but Hathor was never really in danger of not winning that competition. Let's look ahead to March. Can anyone beat Hathor Bjornsson? I think Hathor is in the driver's seat. The, the events really stack up for him. He's Icelandic, so deadlifting and stone lifting are right in, uh, right in his wheelhouse. He's a great presser. Also, uh, strength endurance is something he's, he's training to become more uh, fit. Mm -hmm. He'll be prepared. And, and believe me, he's watched this, and he'll continue to watch it to see are there any deficiencies that he needs to come up on as he watches these athletes. He can be beaten. Mm -hmm. And the man that could do it is here. Also, we have to think about Matius Kaliskowski, who is a fantastic athlete, has a lot of events that will, that will really be in his favor, but the static event, the deadlift that Half Thor has dominated for us the last couple of years is going to really be the separator for him. You know Ode Haugen very well, the man who coaches Martins Leitzis. What's the first thing he's going to get a uh, hold of Martins Leitzis and improve, help him improve as he gets set uh, for March? Bag over bar. I've yeah. already talked to, uh, you know, even yesterday before I, you know, I watched some training film of Martins. I've already talked to Ode. You need to get your guy to get his hips down learn how to put some arc in that bag and get that back to forward drive. You watch Half Thor, Half Thor is in his own stratosphere with that. So basically, Martins needs to hang with Half Thor in the bag and then get his static strength up in the deadlift and then the other strength endurance stuff, he could actually do that. We're only a couple months away from that competition. Realistically, how much better can Martins get in that short amount of time? Well, I call it the magic of competition time. So. This was really a great training event for him. He used that momentum to go into the Arnold and come in second. He's going to take this momentum and go into the Arnold, the Arnold Strongman Classic in Columbus again with a, with a, lot, of, a lot stronger and a lot better from this competition. But it's, it's going to take a lot more you know, training and getting his static strength up. That's what's really going to help Martins take that next step. I think also, too, the fact that he's had these very close wins Back to back here, yeah. we saw a star born in Maxime, and we saw a legend being born in Martins. He's like a bad dream. <laughs> He's like a pack of hyenas that won't let go, and that's exactly what he did today. By the smallest margin, he just didn't flinch, and he stuck in there, and he did what he had to do to win. That's what champions really do. Yeah, and that will serve him well as he gets set for Columbus. Let's take a look now at the final standings from the Arnold Strongman USA here in Santa Monica. And Leitzis by a single point, one point over Brian Shaw. Maxime Boudreau, who started the day with three event wins, was one and a half points back. That's how close it was at the top of the overall leaderboard for this competition. And Ron O'Heinla finished his fourth. He had to get into the top three to guarantee himself a spot 
from the season series points innings to get to Columbus, Ohio. So Martins Lietzies for the second straight year wins here in Santa Monica in his backyard and he is on his way to the 2020 Arnold Strawman Classic. What was the most impressive thing you saw today? Just the dramatic finish. Mm -hmm. Just like last year. He pulled it out of nowhere, and I don't want to say it was a miraculous finish, but it was certainly very dramatic. And as a strongman fan, that's the main thing I want to see. You don't want to see any athletes have problems that don't allow them to perform at their best. He gave everything, and it delivered. And Martins Lises, to steal a phrase from you, is on his way to the high altar of strength in Columbus, Ohio, the Arnold Strongman Classic. And we're going to have it for you on the Rogue Iron Game Leitzies, Hathor Bjornsson, Mateusz Kaliskowski, and a ton of stars from around the world throwing down March 5th through the 8th in Columbus, Ohio. Can anybody knock off the mountain? Hathor Bjornsson going for his third straight Arnold Strongman Classic Championship. That is going to do it for us for today. Thank you so much for joining us here in Santa Monica. For Bill Crawford and Margo Alvarez, I'm Sean Woodland. Catch your breath and get set for a great time in Columbus, Ohio. We will see you in March.